It's been two years since the last bastion of the arcade racer was unleashed into the ever-streamlining crop of current-day racers. Hot Wheels Unleashed was unabashedly unique, a quirky, charismatic revival of the Hot Wheels brand in the gaming medium. And if you ask us, likely one of, if not the most enjoyable and fulfilling racing game released within the past five years. Unleashed was a great success both commercially and communally, yet the biggest hurdle the team at Milestone had to tackle was soon to be reached in that of turning a standout independent title into a fully-fledged and improved sequel. I have to admit, when I watched the initial reveal of Unleashed 2, while I was excited to see this series get a second installment, there was a small inkling in the back of my mind, that skeptical side of me nudging to not get my hopes up, and the question of if this would be enough to justify as a sequel grew ever-present. It's been a few months since the game's release, and after playing through Hot Wheels Unleashed 2, the game is confidently answered on a multitude of fronts, and left me with an even stronger impression than the original. And to demonstrate these impressions, I welcome you to our deep dive into Hot Wheels Unleashed 2. When you first launch Unleashed 2, you'll notice that on the surface, things are kept very familiar. The interface shares some similarities with the original, but it's presented in a much more interactive and animated format. And when you get onto the track, at first I felt let down, as if things weren't as much of a step up from its predecessor. That is, until I looked closer and compared things with Unleashed 1. When you go back and forth between the two, it's clear that the sequel has opted for a much more vibrant color palette resulting in this resplendent improvement in tonal differences. Unleashed looks great even today, but Unleashed 2 makes it look dingy and dark in comparison. The color spectrum isn't the only improvement here. Material and texture quality has been dramatically improved, and thanks to the new ray tracing improvements, makes for easily the best looking Hot Wheels game to date, both on a quality and a style front. We're still running on Unreal Engine 4, but with new tech such as AMD Fidelity X, Unleashed 2 is able to use frame generation to boost the on-screen resolution, resulting in a much sharper image while also maintaining a locked 60fps. The results of the improvements here may not be immediately noticeable unless you're a real tech freak. The approach is more focused on perfecting the style of presentation first pioneered in the original, and it does so in spades. The lighting is the most noticeable improvement out of all though, the more polished ray tracing effects used here and reflection quality as a result lead all sorts of paints, be it metal, matte, or glossy surfaces to behave differently and look outlandishly good. One that really stood out to me is the sheen on 24 hours. The default livery is a treat to watch as it transforms throughout all of the environments on offer here. Attention to detail is genuinely staggering. There's even fingerprints on where these cars typically get carried around, which is such a neat touch, and accents this theme of tiny, shrunk-down Hot Wheels cars stuck and racing around tracks in realistic environments. This is stylized to near perfection. On a gameplay front, the physics on offer here follow the same trajectory as the original, a massive focus on carrying speed and emphasizing clean driving. This is the only true fully arcade mainstream racer out these days, and if you ever needed proof as to why this sub-niche needs to make a return, just play this game. Not everything has to be this half-realistic Simcade style that everyone's going for. These are video games at the end of the day, and more competitors need to lead into that gamey side of things that have all but vanished. Complementing the physics and car behavior is the changes to nitrous placement. Having it right below your car keeps things much more in your line of sight, which is very important considering nitrous management is a much larger part of this game than the original. The best way to describe how Unleashed 2 fares in comparison to its predecessor is that of a team who took a step back, analyzed their vision and project, and made a multitude of minute changes in order to polish and perfect that same concept, which may not seem like much on their own, but in combination working as a package, the improvements here are enough to negate the old game and ensure that this is the true definition of Hot Wheels Unleashed. I want to ask you a question. What's the one thing that makes or breaks an arcade racer? And why is it track design? Sit back and think about the most memorable games in the niche. Split second, 
F-Zero, Burnout, hell, even Mario Kart and Hot Wheels Zone beat that. As the arcade racer continues to die out, and benumbing and one-note open worlds continue to claim their reign as the predominant stage for the racing game niche, games such as Hot Wheels Unleashed stand out as the solitary kings upon the vacuous throne in this creativity-devoid medium of expression. This inherent lack of competition leads Unleashed 2 to be both the clear leader in this field, yet highlights its shortcomings just as prevalently. Let's get the good out of the way first, as thankfully, there is so much to love. First and foremost is the presentation of all of Unleashed 2's vistas. All five are brand new, and make far more of a statement than any of the originals. The first locale we get dropped into is the backyard, which immediately solves one of my primary complaints in the original game, that of feeling locked inside of a box. The backyard immediately gives you that vertical sense of freedom and fresh air that was severely limiting the scale of the original Unleashed. And when you pair that with the tremendous boost in aerial gameplay tools on hand here, the backyard leaves a lasting first impression. I do wish that this track took some liberties with the rest of the house, maybe having some roots which led to and off of the roof of the main estate here, and tossing a sandbox in just as Suntag Driver would have been a great little touch of nostalgia. But at the end of the day, the backyard's melding of fresh air, natural props and obstacles in which to race on and around, and atmosphere are a tremendous start to Unleash 2's track roster. The mini golf course is our next stage to analyze, and in all honesty, it feels just more like a western exhibit with some golf courses chucked about the place. Yet this isn't entirely a bad thing. I really do appreciate how this vista uses the golf courses, putts and all of that jazz as places you can race alongside and on top of. And there are some massive sections where if you just hold on to your nitrous, you can slide at mock fruit throughout the entire stage. It is wicked fun. I do however wish there were some more unique traps for this stage in particular. Perhaps using golf ball dispensers which run down the slopes that you could dodge, but in the end, I'm still happy with this and think that the golf course is a good addition to the game. Unleashed 2's arcade is easily my second favorite spot in the game to race. I adore this set piece. The improvements to Unleash 2's visuals throughout Ray Trace Reflections show off better than any other location throughout the various textures and materials in the mesh here. The neon lights and strips bounce beautifully off of both the environment and your car's paint finishes. Yet the arcade is more than just a pretty face. The usage of spots such as the escalator as real steep slopes, and the vents around the top add in that environmental track element that was missing in the first game. Yet, as I raced throughout the arcade, I kept seeing even more spots that made me think, man, I wish I was racing on that and not around it, but we'll get into that topic later. Thankfully, apart from that though, the attention to detail and parodies of other game series which grace the arcade machines and posters throughout is a beautiful touch on what's easily the most exuberant track in the game. The penultimate track under the scalpel is the gas station, and while an absolutely no way, shape, or form is this a bad apple here, it's the one I feel the most apathetic towards. Having the ability to race throughout an old 50s diner, and the family-run service shop and gas station outside provide plenty of obstructed racing for the player is neat, the gas station is let down by a relatively small play area compared to the other locales on offer here. And while no, it doesn't have a ceiling box, and there's plenty of open space out the front, it still somehow feels cramped and clustered. The lack of setting changes here is also one that I feel holds it back, permanently stuck in this dusky sunset mood. In all, the cramped design, lack of unique traps or tools, and missing X-Factor here limit the gas station from becoming one of the better tracks in Unleashed 2. But in contrast, we have easily my favorite track in the game, the Dinosaur Museum. Let's face it, when you can race right through a T-Rex's mouth and drift right past prehistoric Bunda, you've already got a winner. But combine that with the multiple floors on offer, brilliant usage of reflections and texture work, natural jumps, slopes, off the railing jumps and twists, Come on man, it doesn't get much better than this if you ask me. The only thing I could possibly suggest is if some of the dinosaurs here moved, or there was this display theme park section which had mechanical T-Rexes, something really zany to add some flair to this. But in the end, great verticality, great spectacle, roots, and a track which instills the feeling of a car being stuck in a museum instead of some floating tracks is awesome and the best Vista in the game by far. Unless you're willing to pony out some cash for DLC, because during the writing of this video, my wildest dreams have come true, and we have a fully realized Excelodrome stage. I did actually pinch myself to see if I was dreaming. Yeah. 
The Acceladrome is plain badassery in the purest sense of the word. It fits in with Unleashed track theming superbly, and a touch that I personally love is how you can see one of the diverging routes right underneath or above you, depending on which route you take. And if that isn't Accelerators, I don't know what is. I mean, apart from jumping straight through the portal in the center, which while of course doesn't transport you to different realms, still allowed me to realize something that I've been dreaming of since childhood. It's a small shame that those first five are the only ones in Unleashed 2, and even though locales in the original Unleashed don't show up here, the reasoning for which we aren't sure of, as the games are mechanically and engine-wise quite similar, but hopefully we get more out of this future DLC. But in the end, these five tracks have far more individuality than Unleashed 1 did, and that itself is a massive step up. But there's more nuance to these tracks which still need some scrubbing through. First is the new tools and traps. We've got some speed additives such as the cannons, and deterrents such as the rolling boulders, basketball hoops, and a gorilla which smashes weights down on the track, a biting shake, and Julian's splooge dispensers which can latch onto and damage your car. All of these traps, including returning ones from the first game, benefit greatly from the new maneuverability options. And while I do like the element of strategy in holding onto a bit of nitrous in order to be able to jump when you need to or bash opponents to the side, it does feel at least like it should be tied to a separate gauge, as nitrous is half the fun of racing. Now we've been quite enthusiastic about Unleashed 2's track design so far, and for good reason. There's a lot to love, but throughout our time with the game there was one feeling that persists, and that it's that we wish we were racing on so much of this and not around it. What do we mean exactly by this? Well, let's turn back the clocks to Beat That, for example, here. Beat That took an approach that was using the terrain and set piece as your racetrack, hopping through floorboards, vents, desk pieces, I mean, you name it. There would be tracks built on model train tracks or amusement parks. And that feeling of natural environments as your racetrack, and not the traditional orange tracks as the priority, was what made me fall in love with Beat That. And I can't help but yearn for that to return to this series. Not to discredit the work that Unleashed 2 has done in this field, however, I do feel this game is a massive step forwards on this front compared to the original with segments like the arcade's elevator and the couches in the backyard. But most of the environmental tracks are stuck on the ground and not suspended in the air. And if there is one big thing to consider for future Hot Wheels track design, it's easily that sense of small cars racing throughout a pre-existing environment not around one. This feeling can partly be realized by using the custom track creator in Community Made Tracks, which just as in the original game, are the real standout showing of what you can do with this game's engine and set pieces. This first one is real dusky and moody, demonstrates the excellent improvements to Unleash 2's material and paintwork. And this water park themed one makes great use of water, which I didn't even really know was in this game, and translates into this fantastic trap filled spectacular showing of what's possible in this game. I just wish that the base game and campaign could do more like this. Apart from all of this though, this is a fantastic showing of tracks, and while I would kill for a track that had some snow, or even if you go through a freezer of some kind with frozen tracks to add some weather effects in these games. I have to commend the work done on these tracks, as the core spirit and identity of Hot Wheels is so baked into these tracks, and the result is nothing less than an utter blast to play through. Fitting a story and a campaign into a game in which 99% of the time, you're going to be doing this. may seem a bit superfluous, and when we take into account Hot Wheels Unleashed 1's campaign, which I found to be a bit convoluted in its presentation, and lacking in any sort of real progressor and motivation to play through it, it's safe to say that my expectations for Unleashed 2 were kept low. Thankfully, the wonderful team over at Milestone had a surprise in for all of us, and one that I found to not just fit in Unleashed hand like a glove, but carry on the gamey side of Hot Wheels brilliantly. Creature Rampage is Unleashed 2's offering. We're greeted with, surprisingly, fully realized and animated cutscenes which play out like a visual novel. Though sadly, no Nagito Kameda in this one. Maybe the lack of hope in this genre finally got to him. <laughs> you do, however, have Robert and Darla, who we play as the story unfolds. And boy, does it ever. We're tasked with helping Professor Tanabe defeat monsters unleashed throughout Hot Wheels City, and in order to do so, we shrink both the monsters and ourselves on the Hot Wheels circuits in order to defeat them and solve the city's crisis. Is this completely ridiculous? Yes. Is it fun? Yes. Am I a grown-up child for enjoying this? 
Probably, but who cares, man? If you can't shut your brain off and have some good old plash and plain dumb fun in a badass Hot Wheels game, I'd argue you're the weird one. And speaking of weird, damn man, Milestone really put in the effort for these cutscenes. The game itself doesn't have any real substantial moments which justify them, yet there's well over 16 of these events throughout your trip in Hot Wheels City. I personally found them to be a good way to almost cleanse your palate and bring yourself back into the world after ripping it around at hyperspeed for events on end, and commend their inclusion and addition of more story-focused content as games in this genre continue to consistently devolve and dumb down these components with each installment. Now the cutscenes are fun and all, but let's be honest, we bought the game to rip around tiny cars at exuberant speeds, and how does Unleash 2 tackle this in comparison to the original? Well, boy do I ever have more good news for you. Unleash 2 not only streamlines the organization of events which was quite kerfuffled in the original, and on top of that adds three entirely new modes and reworked boss battles too? Well, well butter my butt and call me a biscuit, you really know the way to my heart. In the days of racers where the gold standard has been leveled to just race, and if you're feeling really exotic, chuck in a few drift events in there, Unleashed proudly races the bar yet again. So let's go over them. Race and time attack remain the same as in the original. High octane thrills against the AI or driving yourself up the wall. Literally, to hit the unleash goals. And those of you who don't go for the unleash goals, I see you. Go boot up the game and hit them. Now, the new additions to maneuverability help add some extra spice to these carryover modes. And there are times where the AI will just pull a stinky and send you flying off the tracks with the ram ability. Proper rude, huh? The new modes are where the real meat of discussion is though, starting with Drift. Drift plays very similarly to Time Trials with both a standard and an unleashed goal, and these are properly difficult in higher difficulties. And little side note here, whoever decided to throw magnet tracks on these events, I will forever hold a personal grudge against you. The key to succeeding here is very similar to how the Crew 2's drift events work. Build up as high as a multiplier as possible, and for the love of whatever you believe in, do not hit any walls. Which definitely takes some getting used to at this level of speed. And I appreciate how all of this helps build up your skills for the rest of the game. I think this is a banger new addition. Elimination races are up next. Now, slight tangent. Every damn racing game used to come with an elimination event type. Yet, where have they gone? Have the fun goblins come and snatched them all up within the past 15 years? As this is from my knowledge the only current day racer that ships with one if you don't count battle royales. Anyways, I preface all of that because they're just damn fun, and Unleashed is no exception. It may not be revolutionary, mechanically it's a very simple mode. Two cars at a time get knocked out until there's only one remaining. But Unleashed existing gameplay loop of fast paced driving, avoidance of traps, and battle ready opponents make this a real recipe for success here. Success is more of a mixed bag with the next event type though, and that would be the checkpoint races. In concept, this is a great addition to Unleash 2. You get tossed in a wide open area with the goal of racing through a series of checkpoints, all under a time limit with Unleashed and standard goals. Sounds fun, right? Well, it is. Except for when it isn't. Throughout 80 to 90% of your time with these, it's a blast using verticality to pull some absolutely wicked tricks to get to the next target, ripping right across these large areas without the limitation of tracks, is stupendous fun, and it gives you the player a sense of freedom and open air that's missed throughout the rest of the game. But there's one major minor flaw, and it's all to do with these. The checkpoints themselves have severe issue with hitboxes being far too small, where in combination with the fact that they can just be straight utterly confusing on where to go next, leading to multiple scenarios where you just get lost for a split second, and in a mode where split seconds are the difference between the unleashed goal and failure, this is a major issue. Having 90% of your run where you drive like a god, smash in the given time, only to cross a checkpoint in which the next one is 140 degrees in another direction, and you don't have a damn clue about that beforehand, can instantly kill 90% of the fun that you've had. This isn't really to do with skill either, as it's just simply poor direction. And all they had to do to fix this is have a little arrow in the top portion of your current checkpoint that shows where the next is going to be, and that's this entire mode near saved and perfected. Yet it's little oversights like these which make a massive dent in an otherwise fantastic addition to the game. The last thing to mention on that vein of events is the reworked boss battles. In Unleashed 1, they were just normal races, your only condition is that you had to finish first. Apart from that, there was nothing really boss-like about them apart from the unique traps. Unleashed 2 improves these massively by ditching the other cars and having just the player go in this bonsai precision driving sprint where you must smash a specified amount of targets to wear down the boss's health. 
You do have to be careful though, as missing a target will almost guarantee failure, especially late in the event, making for some real tension unlike in its predecessor. With all of these improvements to events, Unleashed 2 continues to smash through the genre's recent obsession with one-note campaigns, in which don't feel the slightest bit like the main meat of the game. The lone gamer is more than taken care of here. Whether you're a casual, pro, or total completionist, Creature Rampage is more than sure to take care of you, though it isn't without a few quibbles here and there. This variety continues to pay off in spades as you progress throughout the campaign, scaling difficulty and opponent aggression in tandem with your progress. And as you approach the conclusion, we now finally have a proper ending to this story that we've been sent off on. An improvement from City Rumble and Unleashed, which just didn't end. There's still plenty to do post-game too. Raise the difficulty up and go for harder targets, tie up the loose ends and events you hadn't quite got yet, and clear all of the optional challenges shown throughout the map. And on that map, that's my only real piece of contention here. And it may seem a bit nitpicky, but bear with me. It's a little dissonant that as we move throughout cityscapes, snow, deserts, the tracks that we race on don't reflect this at all. It's a total nothing complaint in the grand scheme of things, but it's something that kept coming back to me throughout my time in the single player. general discussions for the Unleashed games. A topic that I rarely see brought up are the cars themselves, which is very odd for a racing game. So I wanted to shed a little bit more light on the vehicles you'll have access to be driving in Hot Wheels Unleashed 2. Let's start with how it compared to the original game. Hot Wheels Unleashed 1 launched with roughly 70 cars, which is pretty good for an all new engine. It included many Hot Wheels originals, from classics like Twin Mill and Roger Dodger, to newer models like Exotic, Velociraptor, and plenty more. These more modern releases were most prominent throughout Hot Wheels Unleashed roster, in order to tie in with the real-life diecast being sold at the time, though it of course consisted of a few real-life models as well, like the Koenigsegg Yesco, Ford Mustang, Audi R8, and Honda S2000, to name a few. The percentage of cars in Hot Wheels Unleashed 1 clocks in at around 25% real-life cars, 20% classic retro Hot Wheels, and about 55% of newer models. Throughout DLC, this was ramped up to a whopping 150 cars, give or take a few, and the DLC was a real mixed bag. For starters, we were given monthly free vehicles, such as Nightburner and Bifocal 2. While very welcome additions, that's all we got in terms of actual Hot Wheels originals. As for the paid DLCs, we would get one of three things. More licensed cars, Acceleracers cars, and character cars. The licensed cars were of course highly welcomed, with great new additions like the McLaren Senna and 720S. Aston Martin DBS and DB5, and BMW GT2 and 3 liter CSL. But what outshone those greatly every time were the Acceleracers cars. While technically Hot Wheels originals, the status and iconography of these cars puts them in an entirely different league to all the rest, and for good reason. This was the first time Acceleracers was being acknowledged officially for the first time in literal decades. So each time anyone dropped, the hype was unreal. Even if we didn't get a whole lot, Having only 7 by the end of the game's life, it was more than enough to leave people satisfied. What didn't leave people satisfied, and what dominated most of the DLC were… character cars. These were, to put it bluntly, very… weird. And not really what people were looking for. As amusing as it is to see M. Bison as a car for the first time, the joke gets old fast when these types of vehicles are all the DLC ever was. Consisting of every major Street Fighter character, and all the goddamn Ninja Turtles which looked the same. It felt more like an excuse for Mattel to flex their brand deals with things like Marvel, DC, and Looney Tunes, rather than what people would actually want. So much so that two out of the three expansions of the game were character car based, and all of the four battle passes were character car based as well. These kinds of crossovers like Spongebob and Jurassic Park of all things would be cool if it were the actual characters, but having really cursed cars based off of their likeness doesn't really do it, no matter how goddamn funny the plankton car looks. It's just not really what the fans want. And this is the major criticism of Hot Wheels Unleashed 1's car selection. A lot of people playing this game are early 2000s Hot Wheels fans, Accelerators fans, and fans of real life licensed cars. I get the feeling that the developers greatly understood this, and maybe just let Mattel have their way with the brand deals for Unleashed 1. Because for 2, they went 
all out. For starters, the car roster has remained relatively the same in terms of size, launching at the same whopping 155 car list, but the contents have changed dramatically. All of the goofy character cards have been completely Thanos snapped from existence, now replaced with plenty of retro callbacks players adore. Power Pro, Jet That 3, 16 Angels, Twin Mail 3, Sol Air CX4, MST Suzuka, Split and Image 2, Bully Goat, Way Too Fast, Seared Tuna, and Maelstrom, just to name a few. All cars from the early 2000s and other classic Hot Wheels games like Velocity X and Beat That are a much much welcome addition Hot Wheels Niche 2. Along with that are plenty new licensed cars as well, like the Charger Hellcat Bugatti Chiron, Nissan Z, and Golf GTI, along with plenty of neat newer models to keep modern collectors interested too, like Count Muscula, Cosmic Coupe, Tooligan, and Cyber Speedster. Interestingly enough, Hot Wheels Niche 2 introduces two entirely new vehicle types, ATVs and bikes. Bikes, while a cool addition, feel a little too wonky. They drift the same as normal cars, which is quite odd, and the hitboxes don't jive with bumps all at all. ATVs, on the other hand, are somehow ludicrously fast for absolutely no reason whatsoever. Why is the ridiculous looking power sander faster than 90% of the cars in the game? Well, I guess the fastest car in the previous game was a hot dog, so I guess it's not that surprising. That's about it for base game cars, but what about DLC? Well, as of writing this script, the game has only been out for two months, so the DLC is pretty fresh. But so far, we've received a GT3 style car pack, a Fast and Furious pack, Accelerators pack, and expansion, including the absolutely breathtaking new Accelerodrome map with eight Accelerators cards in total now bringing the roster up to 15. Judging by the adjustments to the base game roster and the latest DLCs that we've gotten, it really feels like the devs are much more in touch with the fans of Hot Wheels, correcting a lot of the weirdness of Hot Wheels Unleashed roster to make Hot Wheels Unleashed 2's roster the greatest it could ever be. I'm really hoping the DLC for this game continues on the path it's currently on, because it feels more in touch than it's ever been before. But everything of course comes with a silver lining, and I do have one last complaint with the car list of this game, and more specifically the car class. Classes. There are six classes in total. Drifter, Balanced, Rocket, Heavy Duty, Off-Road, and Swift. Well, these are fine classes. It's which cars are placed into which classes that are somewhat baffling. Starting with drifter cars made for, well, drifting. Including things like the mid-engine Maelstrom, Hotwired, yeah, this is a drift car, and Rocket Fire. I repeat that. Rocket Fire. Moving to Balanced, we have yet another drag car, and a Koenigsegg Yesco, and Power Rocket. I'm starting to lose my mind. Okay, let's move on to the Rocket class. Cars built for straight line speed. If Power Rocket and Rocket Fire aren't in this class, what is? Not one, but two Formula One cars. What? And joining the F1 cars are all of the GT3 cars and a wide body S15. You know what this game considered to be faster in a straight line than a Koenigsegg Yesco? That's right, an R8 and an El Camino. Heavy duty and off-road mostly all make sense. But lastly we have Swift, cars built for tackling corners with no problem. You want to know what according to Hot Wheels Unleashed 2 handles better than the GT3 in Formula 1 cars? A Fiat 500, a Mini Cooper, a drag bike, a bumper car, and Snoopy. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying this ruins the game in any way. It's mostly just funny more than anything. And a lot of these complaints are more for the sake of hyperbole, as all of the cars drive pretty well despite what class they're in. I just thought reading some of these would be funny. As for how you upgrade cars in Hot Wheels Niche 2, you can increase your car from stock to powered to ultimate, either with money or these wrench unlockables. But strangely enough, there's a subset of upgrades beyond that that are strictly give and take, which is a really strange choice for upgrades. Thankfully, they're not required, but the give and take nature makes them very unappealing to a casual player, and it almost wonders why this upgrading system even exists if you have to take away something in order to gain. On the other side of the spectrum, the act of actually obtaining these cars, which was one of Hot Wheels Unleashed 1's notorious weaknesses. You used to have to rely on either the shop, which displayed 5 models at random which reset every 4 hours, or the blind boxes, which were just justified loot boxes. This was of course quite frustrating. If you ever wanted a specific car or a complete collection, this combined with the absurdly low payout per event made Hot Wheels Unleashed a bit of a pain to deal with at times. This has all been rectified in Hot Wheels Unleashed 2. Now races pay a whopping 1500 coins compared to the measly 50 in Unleashed 1. 
With the most expensive cars being 6,000 coins, it only takes 4 races at most to unlock any car you want. While the blind box system kind of returns with the wheel spin, it's entirely outclassed by the new shop system, which will display a much more varied list of cars that refreshes every 40 minutes or can be manually refreshed for a measly 350 coins. With the massive race payout and bonus you get in career and leveling up, makes cars collecting easier than ever. Almost too easy. It only took me about two days of straight grinding to get every car and fully max them out. A far cry from the three months it took in Always Unleashed 1. So in the end, while there are a few quibbles here and there with the cars, Unleashed 2 really feels like Milestone listened to the community. And fitting with the rest of this game, feels like they took the same concepts that they set in stone in the original game and refined and polished them. And in the end, I'm pretty happy with what we got. There's one last thing with Unleashed 2 that as we wrote this script kept coming back to us, and it isn't exactly something tangible. When you take the perspective of a reviewer, we tend to look at every individual component, analyze them to the nth degree, and reach a conclusion based on those things alone. But then, there's the emotional side, who we've been since childhood, just gamers who reach a conclusion based on how these games make us feel. That latter side of looking at games tends to be quite subjective, but I don't think it's worth disregarding. And especially when we look at Unleashed 2, you see it's very rare these days for games in this genre to bring out genuinely strong feelings. And most often when they do happen, it's in a very critical, disappointed, or negative way. Both of the Unleashed games, but 2 especially, have this X factor which when taken alone and separately from just being a sum of all of its parts, constantly drives me back to these games just out of love alone. And I bring this up in reference to the title of this video. Odd Wheels Unleashed 2 is the best racing game that you won't play. There is a cavalcade of people I know who cry out for games just like this to release, yet won't touch Unleashed because of one simple thing, and it's that they're Hot Wheels games. Racing games are racing games, and Unleashed 2 is a fantastic and lone showing of what arcade racers still bring to the table. Combine that with the fact that this may not seem like there is in fact that much different in comparison to the original, worry me that success may be a harder goalpost for this game to reach. And if in fact Unleashed 2 doesn't reach that goalpost, it'll send a message throughout the industry that arcade racers aren't appreciated, so publishers and directors will take note. If you like racing games, you'll love Hot Wheels Unleashed, and we both believe it's absolutely going to put a smile on your face and give you a good old fashioned good time. This is one of maybe one or two racers in the past few years which launched polished to perfection with more content than its predecessor, more structure than its predecessor, and most of all, more heart. Yet after all of this, just because it's a Hot Wheels game, it will forever remain the best racing game that you won't play.